quilting tale today. My name is Shaylin and earlier this month I had asked for viewer input about which quilt I should make next. I gave three choices. One was called Sweet Life, another was Sparrows, and the third choice was Happy Go Lucky. And if you looked at the comments in that video, there were actually two. One was in a progress video as well. Um, the overwhelming majority would like to see sparrows. I did select the sparrows quilt. Thank you all who took the time to vote for your choice. And don't worry if I didn't pick the one that you were hoping for. I will be making them um, and I'll of course share my progress on those when I get to them. But this quilt behind me is an old one actually covering my progress on the sparrows quilt because I have been working on it. Um, I've been kind of fortunate. I complained about the great gray beast of January and February and one of the nice things though is that it did come with a couple snow days. So I had a few days off from teaching and worked on this quilt. I made a bunch of progress on it and so I'm going to share the blocks I've made so far. I'm halfway through them already and so for those who just want to see the quilts come together and see the blocks. I'm going to share those first. And then a few viewers mentioned that you wanted to make the sparrows quilt too and needed some motivation or tips. And so after I share the blocks, I will share my organization and just the method I've been putting them together and my thought process behind them. Um, I think it has helped make it go really quickly and smoothly. And so this quilt should easily be done before the springtime, which is you know, why I wanted to pick a quilt with florals to have it for the spring. By the way, the quilt behind me is a quilt that I did a few years ago called Swoon 16 by Thimble Blossoms, and I used a fabric line called Return to Winter's Lane. Right now it's just hiding the progress of my sparrow block. Here are the 12 all together. I did all the left facing sparrows first. So let me take them down and I'll show them to you up close. This was my first one and I used the fabric line with a flourish by Riley Blake Designs. All of my sparrows are going to have the same solid colored tail feather which is called pumpkin and they'll have these peaches and cream colored little arrows pointing at them and then the rest is a scrappy mix from Fat Quarters.
some fabric organization here. Let me show you what I've decided on. So for the background, I'm going to be using Riley Blake's solids, um, the confetti cotton solids. So I'm going to be using denim for the background. And I have for the bird tails and beaks, I'm going to be using the confetti cotton pumpkin. And these all coordinate with the with a flourish fat quarter bundle. And then for the half square triangles, I'm going to use the confetti cotton peaches and cream. So you need a half yard of both of these. And then I also have for the binding, this is going to be the salmon weave that goes along with the fat quarter bundle. So again, that fat quarter bundle is called with a flourish. And so these solids all match the background colors in here. And then for the backing, which I'm not going to take out of the package just yet, but this is called the denim main yardage and it just has the florals um, all throughout. So I'm just going to set that aside because it'll be a while for that. And then I'm just going to pull from my stash um, either, I don't know if I have a solid black, but I have a really solid midnight blue. It's almost reads as black, so I'll probably pull that out and that will be the eyes of the birds. And you just need a sixteenth of a yard, so very little for that. So I'll grab that later. But what I need to decide right now is which fat quarters I'm going to use for the birds bodies. Now in the original pattern they just use four solid colors and just different combinations of those. So if I were making it like the pattern and I had all my pieces cut I would group you know the three that would make this sparrow here with the coral head and the storm and blush body, I would put those pieces together, those sets of three fabrics, and there should be six of them total. And then the same thing, there's that mint, storm, and blush, so I'd gather those three pieces and make six piles of those. That way I know I have all the pieces for my birds, because there's going to be 24 birds total four different colorways, so six of each, um, and half of them will face left, half will face right. So I think just to not confuse anything, what would make sense to me would be to just gather um, those sets of three colors for each of the bodies, and then they're all going to have the same color tail, feather, and beak, so that part you don't have to worry about, but that would be how I'd organize the fabric um, if I were doing it this way. But I'm going to go the scrappy way um, using a fat quarter bundle. Page three of the pattern shows you how you can cut the fat quarters to get all the pieces that you need. So I just need to make some decisions about which of the fat quarters I'm going to use for the body. And I think the ones I'll take out for sure are all these blues. They're very pretty um, and probably the ones that attracted me to this fat quarter bundle right away. But I just have to consider that all the parts of the body are going to be up against this denim background and so it might just blend in too much. You know, maybe that one because there's a lot of white in there could work. Um, same with this one, there's a lot of white. So I could, this one has a white background, so those are potentials. Um, so I really just need to hold it up and think, will it stand out enough and give me a sharp head or part of the body? I think I'd be better off going with some of the other fat quarters that have the same design, but the background just isn't blue. So ones with higher contrast would be good. So I'm just going to decide and, you know, just hold them up and think about um, 
how I want these to look. And again, it's going to be scrappy, so I don't need to pick, you know, just four. Um, and I'll come back and show you what I decide on. All right, so these are the eight that I decided on for the body. And I thought I'd stick with the smaller prints just because there were some larger florals. Um, and I thought, I don't know how distracting it might be or how well they'll show up, how... Um, much they'll be cut off in the bird's body. This one I thought just had so much white in it that um, it will stand out and I wanted more contrast so it wasn't just the yellows and the kind of uh, pumpkin coral colors. So I'm going to keep those and this white one stands out. These ones I think would also be nice. There were a few prints like this with different background colors that could work for those half square triangles, the little arrows that will be pointing at the birds um, but you need a half yard of those so I'd either have to mix them or order another you know I just need one more fat quarter of one of these so I'm going to use it in the bird's body and then I thought um, the coral even if it's up next to the pumpkin would still stand out so um, I just picked a couple of the pumpkin backgrounds too and I do know they'll go against the tail and the beak but again I think they don't read as just solids where it would blend in so a couple of those and again you're gonna have three fabrics um, per bird and they won't all be matching um, like in the pattern I, they'll be more than four combinations total but this way I figured there's enough contrast you know that I can I can have three distinct contrasting pieces of fabric and so that's really you know what I'm going for is that there's not so few color options that the bird is all gonna just kind of blend in and be monochromatic so this will be a good assortment and then I have a lot left over a lot of those beautiful um, big floral prints and so those I'll just add to my stash because I love florals so I'll have lots of those left to use and you know there's a whole nother quilt possibility in here with the leftover fat quarter bundles so let's go ahead and start ironing the fabric and cutting them down to size. I'll show you my method for getting deep creases out of fabric, um, particularly these fat quarters. I know there's several different ways you can do it, so I'm not saying this is the best way or the only way you should do it. Um, this is just a way that has worked well for me. If you're just looking to get creases out, you don't care about starch or best press, I have found the best way to be a wool mat and then just steam from the iron. So whether you put water in the iron, which I don't anymore because I've had some leaky rust issues and little rust droplets get onto fabric. So I've moved on to using a mister bottle with just plain tap water in it. And so I have tried it with the wool mat without. Um, and just the steam alone without the wool mat, I'd still get these faint little lines of creases in there. Not a big deal, but if you are trying to get them all the way out or just not be as visible if that bothers you, then the wool mat definitely helps. I've also tried with just best press, no water and I still get more of the faint lines even with the wool mat. So I think that just water is the way to go. I know there's other products out there um, like Flatter that's supposed to relax the fabric more, but I think the water works well and it's just less expensive. Now I do want to use best press because just like starching it helps with making your fabric a little flatter and that makes for more accurate cutting and piecing so just to help with the accuracy I want to use best press um, which is a starch alternative but if all you care about is getting the 
creases out, you can skip the best press. Once I've ironed with the water and steam here on the wool mat, then I will go back over it with the best press. So just give the bottle a little shake, spray it on, just kind of as evenly as you can. Let it soak in for a couple moments. I know some people say that they make their own, that it's cheaper. Um, there are recipes online to kind of make your own homemade best press. I haven't tried any of those. What I tend to do is wait for a 50% off coupon at Joann's um, because they do sell the big jugs and they rarely are on sale so when you get a 50% off a regular priced item coupon I like to use that and I've even been able to stack them before when you know if you spend I don't know $50 you get $10 off something like that um, if you have other things you can buy they have let me stack those in the past so um, I guess it just depends on what coupons you have and what your the store policy is but I've been able to get the big jug of best press for you know $17 under $20 which um, seems like a good deal because it it will last quite a bit and I just refill this bottle that I have here I like the linen scent that's the one I'm using right now it just smells like a laundry room I like the peach scent as well um, I haven't tried the lavender I know that one is in the big jug I'm not a big floral fan um, when it comes to scents and then I didn't care too much for the citrus scent that they had too so but everybody's preferences are different but if you are like me you're kind of more drawn to the fruity scents or the clean scents um, I think the linen and the peach one are really nice all right so now it feels a little stiffer, not terribly stiff like paper you can stand up or something, but it does feel a little stiffer, a little thinner. And so again, that will make for easier cutting and when you put pieces together to sew, um, it'll just keep them aligned better. So that's what I think the benefit of best pressing is, but not a necessary step.
cut up all the background fabric into the strips according to the directions where it wanted certain dimensions by width of fabric. And if you're new to this, width of fabric is just referring to the side that runs selvage to selvage. So when you cut your strips, you want the two selvage pieces touching. I also cut the sashing and border strips. So these ones with the alpha bitties on them still need to be subcut, but I just wanted to make sure I had enough fabric to make the strips that it was requiring. And so this is the fabric piece that I have left over in case there's any errors or something made. Um, I do have a little bit of extra, so that's good. All my strip pieces are subcut for the background fabric and the directions worked out really well. It would say to cut smaller pieces from the remnants and so this is all that was left over from the strips and most of these are just the selvage ends but I got all the pieces. It worked out just right following the directions. So background pieces and then these are the parts of the sparrow. I kind of arranged them. These four pieces up here will make the head, the front of the bird, and the main body. And then we have tail, feather, beak, and eye. And the eye, I didn't have solid black fabric, so I'm using Nocturnal, which is from Art Gallery Fabrics Pure Solid, so it's pretty dark. So I went ahead and cut out with the extra peaches and cream some pieces to make the head. So I just will take out this one here, won't be the head unit. Um, I also, just for variety's sake, made one piece of pumpkin that could um, be the front of the bird. And so one of these might come out too, but just for a little bit of variety. So what I'm going to do now is make combinations of three of these body pieces here and make 24 combinations to get my birds ready and just make sure that when I come down to the end I don't have you know all the pumpkin colors or something. I want to make sure I have a good mix. Because the bird blocks will all have the background fabric, they'll all have the tail feather, beak, and eye. I'm not going to put those in with the combinations. So I'm just going to make different mixes of the bird bodies. Of my 24 combinations of prints. What I did was just start with, there's three of each head color since there's eight uh, fat quarter prints. Um, so eight times three is 24, 24 sparrows all together. And so I just started with the head pieces and then attached um, the bottom portion and so that way I can see that I don't have duplicates of the fabric and so I did have to swap some around in the end. I did swap out one of the gold heads for one of the peaches and cream solids again just because I wanted to mix in a little more. Something I was noticing as I was doing the head pieces of the stripe is that 
they're not all going to face the same way when they're pieced on the bird, which I'm okay with because it'll be a mix and it'll just look random. So that is something to keep in mind though if you have directional print um, for the head piece especially because it's made up of multiple pieces. You might consider how you cut it. You might need to cut it different from the diagram. But that's all the pieces ready to go. And so the next steps will be to start piecing. And looking at the pattern, it looks like we'll be making the half square triangles first, which is going to be made out of these two pieces to make the um, little arrows that are pointing at the sparrow. So in my next video, We'll make those and we start on the body of the sparrows as well. This wasn't a bad way to spend a snow day. I feel really accomplished getting all these pieces ready and I can't wait to start putting it together and see the little sparrows come to life. For those of you who had voted for this pattern because you were going to be working on it or needed some motivation to work on it, I hope seeing my cutting methods will help make things go a little smoother for you or just make sense of the organization so hopefully it doesn't seem so daunting. It was really fun to put the combinations of the birds together if you're doing it the scrappy way and if you're doing just the four colors then it's really straightforward to organize it. In my next video we'll start making those half square triangles. Make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos putting this sparrows quilt together. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.